Can you guess who said this powerful statement? From unremarkable KGB recruit to the master of Compromat, this absorbing documentary shows how Russia's leader wormed his way into Moscow's halls of power and made him his own. He was voted by Forbes to be the most powerful person in the world from 2013 to 2016. He is a judo black belt and appears to symbolize two of the martial arts' key qualities, guile and aggression. Yes, those words were spoken by none other than Vladimir Putin. He is one of the most feared and revered men in the entire world, and it's no surprise that he's one of the most affluent too. The first testimonial about Putin's character comes from the opposition politician Vladimir Kara Mirza, who has had the misfortune of being poisoned by people he is certain is connected to Putin and his state security apparatus, not once, but twice, nearly dying both times. I have no doubt absolutely that this was done as retribution for my political activities in the Russian opposition, he says. Kara Mirza sees Putin as a product of his background, specifically of his KGB training. He's doing what he was taught to do, manipulate, lie, recruit, repress. He seems to be quite good at his job. Let's get down, let's get down to business. Before we talk about anything else, let's look at Putin's early life. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin was born on the 7th of October 1952, in what was once known as Leningrad Russian SFSR Soviet Union, which is now more commonly known as St. Petersburg. He's the youngest of three children, and his father, Vladimir Putin, was a conscript in the Soviet Navy, while his mother, Maria Putin, was a factory worker. Unfortunately, Putin's two older brothers, Albert and Viktor, passed away before he was even born. Albert had died in infancy, while Victor passed from diphtheria during the siege of Leningrad. Putin began going to school on 1 September 1960 at school number 193, which was near his home. Putin is a skilled athlete and that he was excellent in his sports. At age 12, he began practicing the fighting styles of sambo and judo, eventually earning himself a black belt in judo and earning a national master of sports in sambo. In 1973, Soviet Central Television aired a new drama series called 17 Moments of Spring, about a Russian secret agent posing as a high-ranking Nazi official called Sterlitz. Sterlitz, James Bond's Soviet equivalent, was a deliberate propaganda creation. The book on which the series was based was commissioned by the then head of the KGB, Yuri Andropov. In one concrete sense, the effort was successful, it made 20-year-old Vladimir Putin want to become a spy. Apparently, Soviet cinema was a big influence on him during this part of his life because he wanted to emulate the intelligence offices you could watch on the silver screen. And did I mention that Putin is fluent in German? He studied the language in high school and was able to master it. Putin went on to study law at the Leningrad State University and graduated in 1975. While he was a student there, he joined the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and was a member of the organization until it was outlawed in August 1991. Putin did not immediately pursue a political career upon graduating. Instead, he ventured into something else prior to becoming a politician, and I think that this career path most likely had something to do with the movies he watched as a boy. In 1975, Putin joined the KGB. Putin trained at the 401st KGB school in Okta Leningrad, and he worked in counterintelligence before being transferred to the 1st Chief Directorate, where he was tasked to monitor foreigners and consular officials who were around Leningrad. He had a pretty long career as a KGB agent, and he certainly had quite a few career highlights. And yes, he did work undercover at some points. However, he resigned from active KGB service on the 20th of August, 1991, with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. This was during the second day of a coup attempt against then-President Mikhail Gorbachev. Putin said that he immediately decided which side he was on when the coup began, but it was a difficult decision for him to make because some of the best years of his life were spent in service. Years later, Putin described communism as a blind alley, far away from the mainstream of civilization, Putin has had quite an extensive and stellar political career. I won't dive too much into detail because it really is a lengthy topic, but prior to becoming the President of Russia, he served as the Director of the Federal Security Service, Secretary of the Security Council, and then as Prime Minister. He is currently on his fourth presidential term and doesn't look like he is ready to depart anywhere. Medvedev was elected President in the 2008 election. 
he was regarded as more liberal than his predecessor, Vladimir Putin, who was also appointed prime minister during Medvedev's presidency. Medvedev's top agenda as president was a wide-ranging modernization program, aiming at modernizing Russia's economy and society, and lessening the country's reliance on oil and gas. During Medvedev's tenure, the New START nuclear arms reduction treaty was signed by Russia and the United States, Russia emerged victorious in the Russo-Georgian War and recovered from the Great Recession. Medvedev also launched an anti-corruption campaign, despite having been accused of corruption himself. He served a single term in office and was once again succeeded by former President Vladimir Putin in 2012. Medvedev was then appointed by Putin as Prime Minister. He resigned as Prime Minister along with the rest of the government on 15 January 2020 to allow President Putin to make sweeping constitutional changes. He was succeeded by Mikhail Mishustin on 16 January 2020. On the same day, Putin appointed Medvedev to the new office of Deputy Chairman of the Security Council. The saga continues. There's been much speculation about how much money Putin has and the fabulously wealthy elite of Russia and Mr. Putin himself is believed to have a huge fortune. He keeps his family and financial affairs well shielded from publicity. The Panama Papers leaks in 2016 exposed a murky network of offshore companies owned by a long-standing friend of Mr. Putin, concert cellist Sergei Roldugan. Mr. Putin and his wife Ludmila got divorced in 2013 after nearly 30 years of marriage. She described him as a workaholic. According to a Reuters news agency investigation, Mr. Putin's younger daughter, Katerina, is thriving in academia, has a top administrative job at Moscow State University, and performs in acrobatic rock and roll competitions. The elder Putin daughter, Maria, is also an academic, specializing in endocrinology. Hermitage Capital Management CEO, Bill Browder revealed to the Senate Judiciary Committee that Putin has a net worth of around $200 billion, which is much bigger than the net worth of the current richest man in the world. He was believed by many because of his connections to Russia, after all, his firm was once Russia's largest portfolio investor. Another theory is more conservative, and possibly more believable. Throughout his entire career as an agent and a politician, Putin was able to develop a net worth of roughly $70 billion. However, there are no certainties about this number, so it's estimated to be somewhere between $70 billion and $200 billion. A lot of speculation has gone into how Putin made his billions, as while his annual salary is somewhere around $120,000, he has been photographed wearing expensive accessories, namely wristwatches, that are cumulatively worth seven times what he makes in a year. There were also reports of him giving expensive watches to citizens around Russia. Some journalists and members of the opposition claim that Putin has a secret fortune that he was able to accumulate by owning stakes in a number of major companies. Of course, nothing has been officially verified. Reuters found that several other powerful figures close to Mr. Putin, often ex-KGB, also have successful children in lucrative management jobs. Russia's best-known anti-corruption campaigner Alexei Navalny calls it a neo-feudal system that looks after a small, privileged class. The 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi was a lavish showcase for the Putin era. It cost Russia an estimated $51 billion, the highest price tag for any Olympics. He is passionate about ice hockey, like judo, and state TV has shown his skills on the ice. When you think of influential Chinese businessmen, Jack Ma's name and story would probably be the first that comes to your mind. This would come naturally as Jack Ma is the creator of Alibaba, the e-commerce giant that has reshaped retail as we know it. However, did you know that there's another man who's risen up to become one of China's richest? In fact, he's become even richer than Jack Ma and has cemented himself as China's 10th richest man. In that video, we're going to be talking about one Wang Wei and how he was able to accomplish such a feat. Click away and find out.